Welcome to Alaska, home to Mount Denali, high-flying rainbows, bush pilots, and more wild birds than we can count. Up here, ptarmigan soar across open tundra and rugged mountains. If you want them, you better come prepared to hike. The Flush, presented by Federal Ammunition. Few places in this world elicit more feelings of awe and power than Alaska. It's a wild, rugged land full of beauty, fish, and wildlife. Up here, if you want something, you have to earn it. Bob Letta lives Alaska's classic bush country life. Bob operates all Alaska outdoors. This is our 27th year, um, and I built it from scratch. He's a world-class hunting and fishing guide with a lodge on the Kenai Peninsula, and of course, he's a bush pilot too. Evan Withrow and Eric Locker are two of Alaska's most hardcore upland bird hunters. You'll soon understand why. They usually hike miles through mountains to hunt, but Bob offered to fly us into a remote tundra valley, and that offer was too good to pass up. It's kind of a bucket list trip to be able to get in a float plane uh, with a bush pilot and get flown back into the back country where there's no roads and see ptarmigan in their natural habitat. Eric joined Bob's ptarmigan hunting guide team just a few days earlier, but on this adventure, we're all going to a place we've never been. There is millions and millions of acres of public land here. It's insane. All right, guys, go ahead and start getting out. Unfortunately, heavy rain and dense fog in today's forecast means we just took a one-way flight in. Like a beautiful day for a while. At this point, we're on our own. Look at this place, you guys. It's beautiful. We have until dark to hunt and then hike our way off this mountain. It's an interesting feeling, that's for sure. It feels surreal. I just hope that I do not have to use this. Alaska's ptarmigan country also happens to be Alaska's grizzly country. We carry handguns, uh, 10 millimeter handguns with bear loads in them, just in case. Plus we have survival supplies if disaster strikes. We've got two inreaches which we can text or send an SOS if we needed help if somebody got hurt. The weather's supposed to come in at three o'clock. It might suck walking out in the rain, but it's not dangerous. It's about the overall experience. You wanna go kill a ptarmigan? I'm ready. Slowed up. He didn't come this far not to. So we have three species of ptarmigan in Alaska. We have willow ptarmigan, we have rock ptarmigan, and we have whitetail ptarmigan. Willow ptarmigan is our state bird. They're the biggest bird, and they live at the lowest elevations. Willow ptarmigan tend to hold tight in willow patches and alder thickets scattered across this wide open tundra. Based on Eric's predictions, it's not if we'll find them, but when. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There it goes, there it goes. Whoa, there it is. Whoa. Held tight. We walked right past it. 
Hey, more power to that bird, man. Holy cow. We got a point. Wow, they're smaller than I thought. That's a, young That's a young of the year bird. On the board in Alaska, boys. On the board. Good work. Thank you. Look at that. Oh, look at you bringing it to me. That's a nice Thank one, bigger you. one. you. Oh, you guys. Okay, so adult, juvenile. What a stunning bird. They're, they're what a stunning bad. place. I've hunted plenty of wild birds in the past, but this bush country bird hunt already feels different. We're miles from civilization, and these wild birds have likely never seen a human hunter. Plus, we've only covered a fraction of this pristine alpine tundra. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Ammunition, Waltons, Rufflin Performance Kennels, Peasants Forever, and by Benelli. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start planning at hellond.com. Alaska's willow ptarmigan can be relatively easy to find if you know where to look. The biggest challenge in getting these birds is getting to where these birds live. They'll go burk, burk. And they live in some of the coolest places in the world. You see how the side of this hill is like tundra? There's no tall grass, there's no willows. Yeah. There's berries growing on that and the birds are coming out of the willows to feed on the berries. Okay. And they'll, when you, they hear you coming, they'll scoot back in. Yeah. So we're gonna work this edge all the way down. Smart move. Eric Locker and Evan Withrow share the same obsession to hunt for these iconic Alaskan game birds. He is stupid enough to say yes to all my crazy ideas and I'm stupid enough to say yes to his crazy ideas. <laughs> it's easy to see why. Shoot him. Nice shot. That is a beautiful ptarmigan. That's a mature bird right there. And you can tell the difference very distinctly. Yeah. I mean, this is a nice bird. Yeah, so that's a young male. It's a young one. You can see even this one's got way more feathers. Yeah, look at his feet. Growing in on the... You guys understand how spoiled you are up here? Oh, 100%. You get it? <laughs> I don't think you get it. I feel, so, I feel spoiled right now, but this is out of this world. Well done. Thank you, sir. You just raised the bar. I grew up here, so like this is all I've ever known. Oh, it's so cool that when you, you get up in these places and you just kind of like look around and you're just like, we're, we're in it. This is a, a place that not many people are gonna come. Most people probably never even know that these kinds of landscapes exist. And the fact that you can hunt birds with your dog there is just, it's incredible. In this part of Alaska, ptarmigan hunting season opens in early August and runs through the end of March with a liberal bag limit of 10 birds per day. She's working that area pretty good. If I was sharp-tailed grouse hunting on the prairie, I would say every one of those patches could have a covey of birds yeah, in it. Exactly. You're hunting it basically the same way. Yep, it's mid-September and uh, just this week, we're starting to see them start to flock up and have more winter behavior. It can be a very feast or famine hunt where you'll hunt the whole valley, and you won't find any birds, and then all of a sudden you'll find 200 birds sitting in one willow thicket, and you're just like, holy smokes. Got him! Whoa! Gentlemen, I have a trophy. It's special. It's a special thing we have. Top of the world. I hear one croaking. Whoa. 
A lot of birds. Look at them, oh, look at them, they keep going. Right? Oh, there they go. Watch for those goats, Evan, see. Oh, they keep going. You, you, you. Hey, nice oh, shot. God. Good shot, dude, that was sweet. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Woo. Oh, look at that, look at that. Go get him, guys. Whoa. Moments like this clearly define Alaska's world-class wing shooting reputation. Oh, oh gosh. Uh-oh. Oh, there they go. <laughs> we just flushed 200 birds out of there. Are they? They're coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a special moment for sure. There's more. Too bad. Good shot. There they go. This is this is next level. Like even these guys haven't even seen anything like this before. And little junipers still on point. The Flush is brought to you by Nutrisource, Aluma Trailers, Big Timber Fasteners, DeWalt, and by North Dakota Tourism. Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever are on a mission to help bird hunters like us find more wild birds on public land. Join Pheasants Forever or Quail Forever today and your $35 membership will help us to create more wildlife habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your investment will go right back into the ground making a difference today that will last forever. Nice shot, Evan. Good shot, Evan. Alaska's alpine tundra and rugged mountains are some of the most undisturbed landscapes in North America. To the untrained eye, this looks beautiful, yet void of life. To an educated ptarmigan hunter, we're in paradise. Got two. Every time that we hunt, we're in awe of what's around us. Feels like you're walking on a carpet when you're walking through that tundra. It is one of the coolest experience in bird hunting. I've dreamed about hunting in Alaska my whole life. Now that I'm here, it feels surreal. Ah, oh, dang it, a long shot. Fetch! Junie, here! We've clearly found a wintering group of willow ptarmigan, but they're not the only ptarmigan species that live in these mountains. It's gonna get up again, it's gonna get up again. Maverick, behind you. What are the chances of running into two species? White-tailed ptarmigan. Oh. Well, that was the most hectic bird flushing experience of my life. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 300 birds, easy right there. And not to mention a handful of white-tailed ptarmigan that hung around. 
you can see a willow and a white-tailed ptarmigan. Different colors, a little bit different size. We're on top of the world right now, boys. Yeah, we are. Yes, sir. Oh, my. And here comes the weather. In the flurry of flushing birds, we forgot about today's forecast. Let's get the fry pan out. Cook up some ptarmigan. Olive oil. Never clean a bird with a glacier behind me. <laughs> no better way to enjoy any harvest than in the exact place that you harvested it. it smells good. When you fry up a ptarmigan where you shot it on the top of the mountain, you get to admire the scenery around you. It just tastes better. Ready? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good. That's excellent. Wow. I think it has to do with the fact that we were exhausted and cold and wet and it was just hot food in our mouth, but it was the best time we could have ever had. Now we begin the long, wet hike out. Thing is, Mav and Junie still want to hunt. That's Juniper, Evan Withrow's two and a half year old German short hair pointer. She's the reason for Evan's ptarmigan hunting addiction. She runs really hard, she puts on a lot of miles. She'll go past 40 if I let her. Maverick matches Junie's desire to hunt. Mav is Eric Locker's one-year-old German short-haired pointer. He's a young dog with a very bright future. He loves to point. And he loves to retrieve. He does a really good job for a puppy. Those dogs clearly make this hunt complete. I definitely appreciate the overall experience. It's an experience I can't quite put into words. Pretty incredible place. I think some adventures you really do have to see to believe. But this time, I'll spare you the details of our crazy hike off this mountain. The Flush is brought to you by Chief Upland, Southwire Tools and Equipment, Wells Lamont Gloves, DeWalt Utility and Sump Pumps, and by Negrini Cases. If you love bird hunting, dog training, and hearing amazing stories from the field, then we invite you to join us each week for brand new episodes of the Flush Podcast. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Today we're kicking off a brand new hunting season. During Alaska's rainy season, the best plans are often made on the fly. My mileage said I did 40, or 43,000 steps. It's raining out right now, so we have time to lick our wounds. After podcasting yesterday's hunt, we catch a break between downpours and head to the Kenai. Rain won't affect us, fish are already wet. Evan Withrow's friends Hunter Hahn and Clayton Longfellow guide anglers on this legendary river. Oh, we have a trophy fisher here on the Kenai, some of the biggest rainbows in the world. The Kenai River flows 82 miles westward from Kenai Lake to its outlet into the Cook Inlet of the Pacific Ocean. Oh, the rainbows are the best. They fight hard, they're fun to catch, and you don't have to clean them after. All catch and release. It just so happens we've hit the peak of their fall migration. Fish hooked up. Whoa! That's a good rainbow. <laughs> what a leap. That was awesome. Yeah, they're acrobatic, man. Oh, what a beautiful fish. What a beauty. That's why you come to the Kenai right there. Wow. 
That was awesome. That was awesome. Trap? Holy cow. That was sweet. I think the Kenai River has the biggest native rainbow trout in the world, at least the heaviest. Hooked up. Got the hot hand up there. They're a big, powerful fish. One cast, you might catch a three inch fish. The next cast, you might catch a 30 inch fish. And sometimes you could have 100 fish days. That's why anglers flock to this rich, turquoise colored river. Rainbow trout grow fast in the Kenai, thanks to spawning salmon that drop billions of eggs. If this isn't the best place to fish rainbows in the world, it's darn close to the top. The Kenai River is world-class fishing. whether it's salmon or rainbow trout or dolly varden, uh, it is one of the, the coolest places to be able to fish. Hey, nice fish, man. All the way up to 30 plus inch rainbows on flies is one of the coolest things that you can experience other than ptarmigan hunting. That's why tomorrow we're heading back up on the mountain. Join us next week for the hike of a lifetime in search of Alaska's ptarmigan slam. Somehow the pinnacle of this journey is still yet to come.